The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show. It's brought to you along with Levi Solicitors, who will offer you a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Dan, Michael, and Rob here to talk about a bald man. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just mm-hmm. looking at you yes. there, Michael. Got car- carry on. We're not all alike. No. All right, keep your eye on. Which, which particular bald man? <laughs> well, one in particular, the German bald man who brought in promises of, of heavy metal football, whatever that meant. I'm not quite sure what it ever meant, but we will uh, we'll have a chat about that and explore. And it, was it an era? It was as much of an era as you got under Massimo Cellino. Yeah, 12 games, wasn't it, in total? Oh, that's an era. That's definitely yeah. an era, yes. This is the uh, the square ball guide to Juve Rosler, specifically his time at Leeds United, of course. We can probably skim past all the stuff at Man City that went well for him before that as a player. Um, where were Leeds? Where was Juve Rosler? What was going on? You've already said Massimo Cellino. That's exciting. Yeah, I mean, as is becoming tradition with these podcasts, we start by asking where were Leeds, and as is becoming tradition, <laughs> we answer by saying we were a complete shit show. Um, we were coming off the back of... Our first full season under Chilino's ownership, which had involved Dave Hockaday and Darko Milinic and eventually Neil Redfern, who kind of fixed things for a little while, which was helped by Chilino getting banned from running the club. Um, Albeit while he was banned, Steve Thompson, who was Redfern's reliable assistant, sort of was mysteriously disappeared. Suspended. <laughs> Disappeared. <laughs> Quite a loaded term there, Rob. Um, and then, yeah, we got to the summer and Cellino was back. His ban had ended um, and it was becoming increasingly apparent that Neil Redfern wasn't going to be the head coach, but Cellino didn't seem to want to tell him. That was a recurring theme with um, mm. with Cellino, as, as it would be with Rosler's ultimate replacement, who we'll, we'll come on to. But yeah, he just, he tended to just let things slide if he didn't want, if he didn't want to tell someone bad news, sometimes I think there were certain people he, like Brian McDermott, he was quite cruel with. Other people, he just went, ah, just I'll just deal with it tomorrow. I'm- I mean, imagine if you were you were a fairly high level surgeon and that was your approach to breaking <laughs> bad news to people. <laughs> oh, I don't want to tell him that. <laughs> you know, just tell him something else. It's really upset him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll say with Rosler at the time when he was appointed because we'd come from the season where a year a year prior to this we'd appointed Dave Hockaday. Rosler seemed. At least to be a football manager, mm. and like had, and had done, had something of a record. Yeah, he, so he'd been at Brentford while they were still a League One club, and what still you, mean, are. you mean they're not true? Yeah, fair point. Um, I think the Championship, aren't they? Is it? I don't know. Um, but yeah, they he took them to a playoff semi final, uh, or a playoff final, sorry, which they lost, um, and then he took over at Wigan, who they were in the Championship, and he took them to an FA Cup semi final. And the playoffs as well, I think. So he was kind of noted as a bit of a promising manager. And yeah, as you say, him not being Dave Hockaday was a big improvement. Um, albeit, yeah, the summit did start with Chilino holding a press conference to unveil Adam Pearson as, was he chief exec? Mm. Or just it was, a, he it was, was a sensible ex- man in an the An executive room. director. And he was mm. seen as, because he'd been around previously, um, like knocking about, was he in the PLC era or was he... After that, it's quite hard to discern what was when and what went where. Yeah, I think he was tail end of that. But he'd gone off and been successful doing other stuff. Yeah. Which, bear in mind, again, the previous season was characterised by Cellino and his kids. Yeah. Well, I was going to say... Well, the whole thing. Based on what Rob said there, like, clearing the bar of not being Dave Hockaday is a fairly low bar to clear. And you could almost say the same of in terms of the executives at Leeds United at that time. Not being the Cellino family themselves, yeah. probably. I mean, you know, with all due respect to them. Um, the latest stuff about Pearson and his treatment of Lucy Ward not so good no as it turned out but yes at the time it was like okay here's a here's someone who might know what they're doing but the way they announced that was Chilino held a press conference which lasted like over an hour I think they and did. Oh, he, well, you also need a break at that some point in the middle yeah there. he nipped out for what he described as a beautiful cigarette a beautiful cigarette and I think was he was a bit more enthusiastic when he got back wasn't he I think? <laughs> very talkative very chatty <laughs> that's why these things could go on for some time fresh air presumably did that Exactly. But, it, exactly. but yeah, it was at that press conference where he was asked about Neil Redfern's future and basically didn't want to answer it. And then I think a week later, he did an interview with the Mirror in which he described uh, Redfern as weak and a baby. And he was describing Redfern as a baby because he didn't turn up to Chilino's welcome back party and he once did a lead salute, which 
Chilino really took offence to for some reason. Neil Redford would absolutely fucking chin him as well. It <laughs> he looks a considerably harder bloke than Chilino, so, yeah. and I wish he had. He spent time in Barnsley, hasn't he? Exactly. Which... And now he lives in Ponty. So, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ponty posh and Bex, as you call them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Him and Lucy. Eh? Um, so. <laughs> Well, the welcome back party idea. So I'm probably just going to give that a swerve. You know, you get an invite. Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll turn up for five minutes and I'll... I'll, I'll go. I'll, but if I'm going, I'll, I'll drive. drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hanging around for <laughs> while it gets me. It parties at six. Well, what time did you start drinking, Massimo? <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, so I, but I remember being not exactly overwhelmed by Rosler as an appointment, but I was all right with it. I think I was like, oh, actually... This is this is better. Maybe he's improving. Is Chilino? Maybe he's realised you can't just pluck someone from com- complete obscurity. And he did have a decent record, and he was good on champ manager ninety four ninety five as well, which which was a massive help as far as I was concerned. Very persuasive. So I mean, I I liked him for that. We had pictures of him in a um, in a my granddad bombed Old Trafford t shirt as well, didn't we? Which was um, yeah, that was, that was always popular at Main Road, wasn't it? I'm not sure if that was strictly true. He was a communist as well. I feel like Ken needs to come back here. Maybe oh, communist. <laughs> he was a, he was he's East German. East German as well. So yeah. interesting. Was he, he had, going through the tunnels in the Cold War and stuff? He had some. He had some interesting backstory. I actually bought after after we appointed him. I bought his book because I thought it might be quite interesting to read. I never did. I was just about to say that book was on sale in the Leeds shop for about four years after he'd left. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was there for a long time. It's the it's the Partridge Alan Partridge scene of, uh, of turning up to the to the warehouse for the book pulp in. Yeah, but no, I thought he had quite an interesting backstory because as well at the time he was at he was obviously from East Germany and at the time he was at Man City it was the first the first round of foreign players coming into the Premier League and stuff. I thought it might be quite interesting, but it's sat on read on a bookshelf at home because by the time I'd, I was thinking about starting it. He'd already gone. He'd been fired by that point. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We a, new, say, a new watermelon. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We say Chilino and had changed and wasn't just plucking someone from obscurity, but Adam Pearson revealed at Rosler's unveiling, which Chilino couldn't be asked to turn up to, uh, he says um, that Chilino met Rosler once and decided to give him the job. He says there were hundreds of, hundreds of candidates, but as soon as he met Rosler, he was like, that's the guy. I'm betting of those hundreds of candidates, he only met Rosler. <laughs> yeah, Rosler yeah. was the first one through the door. Went, hey, you'll do it, you guy. <laughs> oh, that's the only one he could remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what was he promising to deliver, though, Juve Rosler? Top 10 finish. And this was the, the heavy metal football. So I wonder if this reminds you of anyone, actually. But he said at the time, the style I favour is very much influenced by German football. Focus on the transition. Get very quickly into attack and into defence. A quick passing game with lots of attempts on goal. I don't want to play long balls. I want to play a quick, powerful game. What Jurgen Klopp calls heavy metal. Hmm. And it was around this time that Jurgen Klopp was asked about this moniker of heavy metal football. And he basically just said, I wish I didn't talk so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was when Klopp was likeable. Was that So that was the idea of, of what we're seeing now to be known as the Gegen pressing and things like that. Is that right? That's right, yes. Um, whether that's actually what we saw, we will get to later. Mm. Mm. Beautiful sign-off line as well for whoever was uh, hosting the um, the press conference on behalf of the club. Thank you for attending this press conference. I'm sorry if they're becoming a bit repetitive. <laughs> you know, don't you? When you Apologising know. for the drunk man. No, <laughs> sorry. It's, you He's know always what, like this. You know, you know what they're going to be like, don't yeah. you, by now? Um, so what we delivered that summer was not what you necessarily thought. Um, Fernando Forestieri talked about a lot, obviously the Italian link there. Talked about forever. Mm. I feel like we were sight listing, list, linked with signing him for at least three or four years. Well, it was the classic Leeds United transfer story of the time in that Chilino basically said we'd signed him. And then towards the end of the summer, when it became apparent that to sign him, you would actually have to pay for him. <laughs> um, Leeds put out uh, a statement on their official website including quotes from Chilino, basically saying that Forestieri doesn't have the right mentality. Um, and just for the avoidance of doubt, that is still on the Leeds United website. Yes. I've just clicked the link. It's it's there. Mm. And wow. It's, it's later that season. Uh, by that point, Rosler has been sacked. Spoiler alert. Uh, but Forestieri has gone to Sheffield Wednesday, scores against Leeds, wins man of the match, and <laughs> tweets out a photo of him with the man of the match award saying, I hope I've got the right mentality, which fair play, to be honest. You've got to yeah, dock you got, your cap to that. You've got to respect that, haven't you? Really? Uh, Still so, only 33 for us, Jerry. I just looked him up. Could do a job. Going to uh, gonna chuck some names at you now then. See what you think of these lot. Chris Wood. Yeah, seems all right. Stuart Dallas. Won't go on some, to do anything. Some loser, he knows from Brentford, doesn't he? And Sol Bamba. 
Yeah, fine. We liked Sol at that point because he'd come in on loan the previous yeah. season and was immediately good. And also he'd called out Chilino in the summer and basically saying, get your shit together, mate. And had still been signed permanently and made captain, which Tom, was surprising. Uh, Tom Addy, Amy? Was well regarded at the time. Mm. Uh, and Will Buckley loaned in at the start of October as well. So quite was, a few. Was very good against Leeds once. And then we saw him <laughs> for, you were like, it's the same guy. Lee <laughs> Irwin as well. We got Lee Irwin. So there, there was a little bit of hope in all that. And, and one of our uh, previous Americans, Charlie Horton, mm. um, came in as a goalkeeper. Lee Irwin looked good in the calendar where he's fishing in the River Air mm. um, topless with Casper Sloth, I think. Because again, these were the kind of things that were just happening kind of on a regular occurrence at Leeds, and you wouldn't even think it was weird by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, the other weird thing that was going on was uh, Sam Byram it was at the hottest property at Leeds at the time, being linked with Premier League clubs, so obviously we offered him a pay cut to see if he'd stay. Yeah. We- uh, I just, just before going any further, I've realised you've completely done Moscow dirty here because this is when Jordan Bataka arrived. Let's not talk about Jordan Bataka. Moscow, Moscow's spoken already, <laughs> already at too much. If, if you're to believe Wikipedia, we paid a million quid for him, 1.3 for Stewie Dallas, 3 million for Chris Wood, and another million for Sol Bamba. So we had actually seen a little bit of expenditure. So there's kind of that part you're going, well, hang on a second, maybe he's serious now. He's put in a semi-serious manager at very least who talks a good game. We've spent some money on players. You think, oh, this could be all right. And Chris Wood did have a decent record at this point as well. He, he had scored goals in the championship, which we hadn't had because we had Steve Morrison. Mm, the the focus on the summer was Chris Wood up front, so we're going to score loads of goals and we're going to play wide and it's going to be Stuart Dallas on one wing and they were thinking of converting Sam Byram into the other winger and I think it, I listened back to a couple of the podcasts at the time and in your pre-season predictions, Moscow tipped Sam Byram to be top goal scorer and suggested that this was the season he was going to become a Cristiano Ronaldo, Gareth Bale-like figure. <laughs> Ah <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Hindsight uh, makes fools of us all. We should also say Luke Murphy did actually take the pay cut. Uh, he signed a new contract that summer and that was on reduced terms. They so. weren't, in fairness, Premier League um, teams on the phone to him That's though, true. at the time. Whereas, and I think it was for a lot, an extended contract, wasn't it? So I think he was taking mm. the, the security of a longer deal. But I think it was kind of a common occurrence at Leeds that players were getting offered less money than they were on. We, uh, we did get a shot of Steve, Steve Morrison, didn't we, though, didn't we? At that point, I mean, that was nice. Yeah, after, yeah, because he represented a lot of bad things in my mind, um, such as the departure of Luciano Becchio and a man who resembled a skull. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> he was very Millwall as well, wasn't he? Yeah. He could uh, never quite shake the Millwall off him. And we uh, we sold Billy Sharp as well, half a mil to Sheffield United. Still going down there. He was 29 at this mm. point. So he's still, still going. I mean, the maddest thing is, we obviously didn't realise it at the time, and it's a very generous kind of way of looking back at things but this was kind of a real changing of eras in that place like Rudy Austin and A.D. White were finally leaving and we weren't realising it at the time but some of our promotion heroes were sort of that team was slowly starting to form this Stuart Dallas joined Liam Cooper's already there Berardi's already there this is the season where Calvin Phillips starts to establish himself in the team the following year Luke Aylin rocks up so it really is remarkable that those players have made themselves what they made themselves to be. Yeah, and when you look at it, when you frame yeah. it around this season, it's definitely. Yeah, yeah. So pre-season, talk to me about pre-season. Where did we go? What happened? Apart from the 25 arrests. <laughs> <laughs> it was, there was a misunderstanding with those arrests. Yeah, I mean, it's not like there's video footage of it on YouTube of people throwing punches on a field in... Austria. It's hard to tell who's who, but the, it looks to me like the Leeds lads are uh, defending themselves. Yes. <laughs> Without a doubt. So there were 17 arrests. 17 of those arrests. Uh, so it was a 17-8 win for Frankfurt. Mm. Seven in hospital. Mm. Quite a lot of fisting went on. In fact, I do. Mm. Uh, from the time of this, I don't think Leeds were actually to blame for this. It right. was. Um, I think Frankfurt fans had had, had travelled with this in mind. Whereas I think uh, because we were supposed to play Bill Bow, weren't we? That, that's like the thing. We were supposed to play Bill Bow. For some reason, that didn't happen. So the, yeah, they announced the friendly against Bill Bow, and then Bill Bow had a Europa League qualifier. I'm not sure who should have noticed that first, but yeah. So then Eintracht. Eintracht Frankfurt were arranged as opponents in the Tony Yeboah derby um, and it all went wrong in Austria and it was a riot basically. Well I mean I want to um, fall back on the words of Neil Slynn uh, from Garforth who told the Yorkshire Evening Post a few of us went over to applaud the Frankfurt fans which you would thanks for coming lads we appreciate your journey and over going to go shake their hands I mean at a push you might offer your hand and then go like that with your nose hmm. mightn't you um, then their bloody ultras jumped over the advertising boards and started attacking us some were wearing balaclavas and they were outnumbered. 
which is reflected in the arrests, actually. It's the mm. old 17-8 result in the arrests. So, naughty lads. Leeds lads. Great bunch of lads. Great bunch of lads. Great bunch of lads. But, I mean, again, uh, leaving aside the the arrests and everything, pre-season to pre-season under Chilino, you, again, you're seeing progress, though, because, you know, I'd heard of Eintracht Frankfurt, whereas the previous year we'd played ourselves in a game because one team didn't turn up and then we absolutely dicked a load of Italian amateurs, FC Gardena 16-0, in which we put our own goalkeeper <laughs> in their net, so he had something to do. So this was progress. Uh, yeah, it was... Um, admittedly, this pre-season it did start with Giuseppe Belushi getting abused by his own fans at Harrogate. That was good. Um, Long which, overdue. Yeah. We've already established Leeds fans are a great bunch of fans. <laughs> so. And... Yes, Tadcaster Albion were beaten by a Leeds United 11, but then we drew with Harrogate and we drew with York and then lost to Eintracht Frankfurt and Hoffenheim, who I think were both in the Bundesliga, to be fair, at the time. But then there was a bit of optimism right at the end of the preseason when we beat Ellen Road 2-0 at... We beat Ellen Road, did I just say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We beat Everton at Ellen Road 2-0. Yeah. Uh, and Alex Mowat scored a great goal and Chris Wood scored a... A spectacular deflected goal um, but yeah it was like oh beating Premier League Everton this is great albeit they did have a friendly arranged for the following day which against Villarreal and I think that's the game that their first team actually played in well by pure coincidence I was clearing out some cupboards yesterday um, and I found the issue of the square ball that we put out of uh, Juve Rosler looks a little bit like, like Ray Wilkins on the front of it <laughs> but this is issue one from that season 2015-16 which I'm showing to the camera on the video version, which is available on YouTube, by the way, if you're listening. Does heavy metal float? Um, and this is a picture of Juve Rosler with the, f- the caption, what have I done? <laughs> it's a fair question. Asked by many a, a Leeds manager. Yeah, I found this in the cupboard um, last night when I was clearing it out. Looks very, very nice. Beautiful. That um, When we beat Hoffenheim, would, um, would Alfred Schroeder have been their manager at that point? I've just had a thought because uh, he was there around that time, mm. wasn't he? Could that be? A, could it be our first crossover with him? We lost to Hoffenheim, we should say. Yes, sorry. Um, yeah, but yeah, that that um, the optimism of the Everton game really translated to the podcast when in your preseason predictions, Michael, you predicted tenth. He was assistant at Hoffenheim, by the way, just to mm, confirm. Assistant there, okay. So he was there. Uh, you predicted tenth, Michael. Uh, which was up from your usual 15th, I think. I guess we always finished what a, 15th. What a crazy dreamer I was. <laughs> uh, Moscow finished 9th, having predicted us to get relegated the previous season. And Dan, you were very optimistic. You predicted us to finish 5th and win promotion through the we've playoffs. Got one in I was going to say that feels like the genesis moment yeah. of we've got one in us. And that. Yeah. explaining your optimism, you just said there's something. There's, which, there was something. That, that I was correct on that uh, assertion. How did we get on <laughs> in real life? Draw, 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 yeah. draw. It took us five <laughs> games to win, but we were undefeated for seven as well. It's, it's confusing, isn't it? You don't quite ever know um, which way that one's heading. So we, we opened the season with a one-all draw, Burnley. Went to Reading 0-0, which sounds like the most boring fixture since football was invented. <laughs> um, Bristol City away, 2-2. Yeah, we led 2-0 in that game and conceded twice in the last five minutes. And it was after that game you were comparing Silvestri to Rahubka. Uh, and I actually remember listening to that game on the radio and, some... and and actually on the radio, not in the way we yeah. watched the uh, <laughs> listen to the Man United game recently on the radio. <laughs> yeah, that was actually because yeah. all games are on the radio these days. Aren't they? <laughs> but someone rang into BBC Radio Leeds afterwards and was defending Silvestri, saying that's Italy's future number one. And I can still remember Adam Pope just laughing at him. Basically, <laughs> did get a call. He got up, called didn't up. He? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's actually quite well thought of in Italy now, which is funny. Isn't he's it? not got a cap, I don't think. But overcame that. Really serious back injury as well. You've got to remember. Mm, yeah, like to, to to overcome that in a your survi- career. A survivor in many ways. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a real um, victory. Is that for him? Because so I, I, I thought he'd never walk again. So <laughs> so we finally got a victory away at Derby County, fifth game of the season, having drawn one all against Sheffield Wednesday at Ellen Road the week before. Uh, then we went to uh, back to Ellen Road after beating Derby and drew with Brentford. So that's one, two, three, four, five plus three is eight points out of your opening. One, two, three, four, five, six games. Eight from six. Is that any good? It's it's a bit meh, isn't it? But given that we were target, we were targeting, we were targeting tenth. Yeah, Rosler himself um, came in and said he was targeting tenth, which I don't think Chilino was too happy about that in the end. But again, we'll get to that. Uh, we went out of the uh, the League Cup in the first round as well. We lost on penalties at Doncaster. Paul Lewis Cook sent off. It's a bit Jesse Marsh, isn't it? As a set of results go, because it felt like 
you were hoping to see the best in it. And we had been close to winning on a few occasions. So you sort of go, well, it just doesn't take much to turn this. Like, it, we don't need to improve loads. We just need to be a, a bit better in about half of the games. It always, and it our always league goes, position will be, will be all right. It goes back to the idea of fine margins, doesn't it? And I think that's one of the things I've come to terms with with Leeds being in the Premier League. It's, it's such a tight league and it is all about happening to score at the right moment in order to win a game. It was very um, spooky listening back to the podcast and hearing it go from cautious optimism at the start of the season and then a few games in, still waiting for a win, not one at home. Chris Wood not really scoring the goals, Sam Byram not really working out on the, on the wing and you're going, you know, we, we're all right. It's not terrible, but we're all right. I, I like the ideas. Is this Michael that. version 1.0? Uh, yes. And then uh, by the end of it, it's just, fuck this guy, this is rubbish. <laughs> Comparing the football to Neil Warnock uh, saying we can't retain uh, possession and it's very kind of, it just gets direct. This kind of fast transition football is actually just kick it forward and Chris Wood is losing headers. Um, which, yeah, I don't know if that reminds you of mm. anyone recently. So the sequence of results that undid him um, after that Brentford draw at Ellen Road. So we're still undefeated, as I was saying, to that point. First defeat of the season came 15th of September when we lost to Ipswich at home 1-0. Then we went to MK Dons, which is not even a real football club, as we know, and mm-hmm. won there. So that, does that re- even count for the record book? Not really, no. Um, and then we lost 3-0 at Middlesbrough, 2-0 at home to Birmingham, and then we lost to Brighton on the 17th of October 2015. Right, right, right around the anniversary of the club, the, that, the club's birthday. That Brighton game, um, two of the goal scorers, future Premier League footballers, Liam Cooper and um, Solly Marsh for, uh, mm. for for Brighton. Well, there you go. Who, who, saw, who saw that coming at the time? Yeah. And I can remember Zamora when he, he scored a late winner, didn't he, for, for Brighton. Um, I can just remember the... Uh, the hateful noise that descended upon Ellen Road when that happened, that kind of sense of, you know, a, a late goal always hurts, doesn't it? But and you know, you know there's no coming back from it. In the middle of September, Adam Pearson had already left. There was kind of that revolving door of people, Chilino would turn to for a bit and then would just get sick of hearing them, maybe. so. The sen- <laughs> Stop telling me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Stop telling me I've got to pay these bills. So the sensible voice left the room, as it always did. Yeah, I mean, the... The sensible people were presumably telling him to do things like pay the winding up orders. That at least try to try and stop the winding up orders that kept arriving at the club on a, mm. a daily basis at this time. Because he was like, oh, "I'm not paying this. I don't have to pay this." They were like, "I ain't paying the bills." Like, everyone was like, <laughs> no, "You kind of you kind of do because of like like the, legality the law. stuff." <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Ah, oh, fine." Um, so he got fired October the nineteenth. Um, <laughs> Steve Evans essentially sat outside Thorpe Arch by the prison waiting for Juve Rosler to go. Out of the uh, out the driveway the other way. I mean, Steve Evans, what wasn't what any of us were asking for when we were fed up of Rosler. It, it that was probably worse than I'd imagined. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the end of the previous season when he'd rocked up at Ellen Road wearing the sombrero and mm. beat shots and just been horrible, basically. Uh, yeah, not something. No, uh, Chilino, I, w- I watched the game on Saturday, and in the second half, we were just trying to not lose. We were not trying to win. That's not good enough. That was him talking in the Daily Mirror. Well, it sounded very authentic, I think, as well. Mm. I wanted them to play heavy rock football, but instead it was like country music. I did my best to help Juve, but in the end I could not see even a patch of blue in the sky. Just cloud, cloud, and cloud. Quite poetic there. From, other than that, though. Um, from an idiot. The other kind of important factor on this day was that Chilino was getting banned again by the Football League. Uh, this time for, I think it was a VAT a fence over a Land Rover. It was mm. a it was a yacht the previous season. So it was like a I mean he loves sacking people, doesn't he? It's his favourite thing. So I think just on his last get game. Get one more in. Yeah, just get it in there quickly. And uh Chilino <laughs> hated Evans, but he put him <laughs> in anyway. Cause someone else do the accent this time. <laughs> it's, it's all very wearisome, isn't it, listening to it. He just he talked Endless amounts of bollocks, didn't he? I used to hate him because he's a fighter. I didn't like playing against him because he gives his team his personality. He's a tough coach and I want that character in our team. He manages with passion and our team has not been playing with passion. He, the thing is with, with Evans, though... Separate is, show, by the way. This is a separate is show. It, is it passion or is it just him being a gobshite on the touchline? Because I think... Well, I think should, we do that, know, should we do that on the Steve I Evans think, episode? I think yeah. confused the two, and I think that's maybe what he'd got to on this. And he was always happy to suck up to Chilino as well, wasn't he? Yeah, massively. I mean, he, look at Steve Evans before Leeds. 
at Leeds and after Leeds. Yeah. He was he was bullied that much by Cellino. He lost about ten stone <laughs> in his time in his time at Ellen Road, and, and then as soon as he left, looked better for it. He did look better, yeah. and, and was no doubt much healthier for it too. But yeah. um, maybe Cellino got him on his diet. Who knows? Uh, well, what's the postscript then? We, we drew the first two games under Evans, just like Rosler. Um, first game at Ellen Road, Blackburn scored after 17 seconds again. I can remember that. And yeah, we we'd not up after six minutes. We'd not won at Ellen Road since like the previous March or something. And Evans was giving it the big, don't you worry. Once I'm back at Ellen Road, everything's going to be great. And yeah, what was it? 17 seconds in, we were losing. <laughs> and 2 0 down after six minutes. It's essentially yeah. the reverse of that Pablo game, <laughs> yeah. which I missed. But I did. I always, it always stands out as this game because I, I entered the stadium as the ball hit the net for uh, <laughs> for that. You know, you sort of because I was obviously putting mags or whatever back in the car after selling. You just, wanted to just go in and go turn walking around up, again. Walking up the stairs, it's the Homer, it's the Homer Simpson meme minute into yeah. the bush. <laughs> Literally yeah. step up into the into the cop. Ball hits the net. Brilliant. Two nil. No, it was it was one nil. Oh, I think it, it was the one. It was the one nil. It was a seventeen seconds. And you in. didn't you didn't have to wait long anyway, did you? No, but it's like great stuff. Yeah, and was it Jordan Rhodes? I was the second one. We'll save all the Steve Evans chat for a separate episode, I think, because it is a story in itself, isn't it? Even though this was only 12 games, it's it's still quite a story, isn't it? Um, we finished 13th that season. We lost Byron. We went to West Ham in January um, to start his Premier League career, was it, at that point? Or were they down with us? It's hard to... No, it was Premier League, wasn't it? Mm. Damn. I think that's where he continued the Ronaldo Bale trajectory. Um, yeah. Injuries. He had injuries. They did for him, didn't they? Played him too much, I think. That was Neil Warnock's fault. We're we blaming him for that. Yes. Uh, fair enough. Uh, and then Juve Rosler... Went on a. We went to the seaside after us. Did went to Fleetwood. He, we um, we beat his Fleetwood side, didn't we, under Gary Monk in the um, in the cup. Was that Tyler Denton scored? Did he? God, I can't remember. I think that yeah, Phil may have done a. Was that when he nearly? On it. Was that when he nearly sacked Monk at half time? <laughs> Again, confusing times. Again, probably another story. Um, and he went to to Malmo, Sweden as well. Um, missed out on the title, but got into Europe. That's good. Yeah, the Europa League knockout stages, two years in a row for the first time in the club's history. But then Fortuna Dusseldorf in 2020 and got relegated. So it's um, it's a mixed bag, isn't it? But, you know, he's always got jobs. Fair play. And I think he was he was not our worst manager of this period, was he? Again, it's, it's not a massive compliment, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I think we'd have probably stayed up under him that season. I know, um, I know Evans made, you know, made a... A big deal of the yeah. great job he'd done, but I think Ross probably would have kept us up, whether or not it would have been thirteenth or sixteenth. Mm. Realistically, L- listening back to the uh, podcast, you were basically saying Rosler, it might be all right, he might have a long term plan, but it's pointless having a long term plan under Chilino because <laughs> again, he loves sacking people. Yeah, if you can't win, if you can't win at least one game in four, yeah, that's yeah. you're out. That was exactly <laughs> what you were saying. You were saying if you're going to finish tenth, you're going to have a spell of six games where you might not win. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, final thought on Juve Rosler. He's currently in Denmark uh, as manager of Our House, which is... In the middle of our street. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. There you go. Join us again soon for another TSB guide to something else that's equally fun. We'll see you soon. The Square Ball Podcast.